All right, the uh, short version of this is uh, some BLT actor wants you to watch some Cringe Fest show, and if you don't watch the Cringe Fest show, you're like uh, this judge who also is the phobic, presumably because he didn't want to see... Oh, this is the, the 10th Amendment, 14th Amendment thing, but it's it's nice of you just to call people istophobic instead of instead of maybe addressing the Constitution. It's the 10th Amendment issue. No, 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 the 14th Amendment says that the federal government needs to get involved in these, these, these 10th Amendment issues. No, it's really not that deep. It's just a 10th Amendment issue. It's a states' rights issue, not a not federal oversight issue. Yes, the Founding Fathers did not intend the federal government to be this massively... Um, Massively powerful, as you see it before. No, they must get involved in everything. Why is why are they so f- afraid of decentralized authority? Because they know if there's one centralized authority, they can subvert and corrupt just that one central point. If you control the pivot point, then you don't have to control every other point that's affected by it. That's why they love that centralized control. But um, a- a- anyway, um, so you're istophobic if you don't watch a R-rated... Uh, comedy in quotes or even romantic comedy comedy which would be even in more quotes so keep in mind there were um blt comedies in the 90s and they were not uh they weren't they were not like what i guarantee you're going to see in this comedy this is the opening scene i think that's on youtube where the the two guys are involved in a passionate again that's that's in quotes kiss um and then the camera pulls back, and you see that there's a third guy uh, involved in the situation. N- now, here's the thing that uh, being in an echo chamber prevents you from seeing, I guess, or, or they're they're just openly saying like this is for a very small audience. There's a there's a thing with two guys kissing that um, guys can't w- watch it without. It, it triggers a response in uh, in their brain, our brains where it's a visceral um, response. Uh, it's not a good it's not a good response. It doesn't. Hey, you're istophobic. No, it's just it's just something that's uh, I don't know how, how much I can say on YouTube. Um, it's just a response that it, 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 it's lack of interest. They want to go away from. They do not want to see that. Um, it's just it's just how uh, people are wired for whatever reason. So um, I don't know if they're very so deep in an echo chamber where they're not aware uh, of an audience response. Like maybe the test audiences were all BLT or very, very far left wing or maybe all women or something to, to see a scene like that. It's a kind of scene where they show this stuff and they go, oh, yes, stunning and brave. Take my money. Take my money. And then when the I don't know if it's a streaming show or a movie or whatever, it's like it comes time to go out. They're like, oh, yeah, nobody's watching this. Oh, what happened to all the, the people on Twitter? Said, Twitter's free, buddy. Twitter and YouTube comments are free. It doesn't cost them anything to say, this is awesome. I would I would just love to watch this. It's like, well, what happened? Oh, oh, I just forgot. Yeah, because that was virtue signaling versus reality. Those 90s comedies were, they made sure that they knew it was a comedy. The stuff you're seeing now where there's two guys and the camera pulls back and there's another guy on his knees, it's like, that's not funny. In fact, that's not romantic. That's more on the level of prawn. Well, I mean, that, that actually is prawn. That's a, a graphic representation of prurient interest. It's like it pretty much uh, pretty much nailed it. So, so, you know, pretty limited audience. In fact, let me, say, let me go out on a limb and say the audience is limited to uh, men who are attracted to other men and also want to see a, a movie like that. Is there an audience out there? For sure. Um... But, like, telling a VMA audience, I don't know, it's like an MTV type of thing, that they need to go see this movie so you can own the uh, own the conservative, the uh, the judges, own the uh, Republicans to go see a, a movie where three dudes are involved with each other. Ah, uh, good luck with that. So, um, what happens, a comedy uh, identifies as a comedy, but it's actually painfully unfunny. But the thing I found interesting about all this kind of stuff is the language manipulation you see when they call something like this a romantic comedy. Because to us, usually that means a man and a lady fall in love, they have kids, they carry on the tribe, they you know fight the dragon, rescue the girl, live ha- happily ever after. It's a very uh, well-established kind of theme. And it's not to say that you can't play off of that theme, knock yourself out, but it's not, to call it romance is is what I take issue with. It seems like a subtle manipulative device to uh, change people's thinking, which, <laughs> hey, there's, there's global manipulation for you. A gay orgy is not a romantic story. It's the mindless 
chasing the hedonism of the uh, that 1930s countries uh, overseas that, that sees that we uh, um, saw history kind of repeating a little bit. Words have meanings; <laughs> they subvert the language so that they, they can uh, control it. How do you think they use this total 1984 levels of media control to brainwash you to accept terms uh, as valid, but then they never prove these terms and you're phobic if you don't accept the nonsense that they're telling you, but then they don't define or prove those terms or anything else, and they use the ADL who changes terms and definitions overnight. Yes, uh, language evolves organically. They pull the scenes right out of the scene in 1984 where the conflicting newspaper reports come out. It's like, yeah, that's that was... It was supposed to be a warning. And it's like, no, no, it's it's a guidebook for them. And the media goes along with it because the same handful of of companies fund anything that manipulates the, the narrative. They use generational brainwashing to get people to accept things. Now, that would not have been acceptable a few years ago, and that is putting it mildly. All this is only possible when you turn a nation of uh, 1965 into a commercial zone controlled by uh, corporations and foreign agents and not the people, because there is no people. It's just an economic zone America. What is moral is whatever the puppet masters want, which is not the same thing as profit. This isn't about money. Um, it's about Bolshevism, which is about pushing a narrative, and both left and there's, I see more left people on the left making this mistake. There are people on the left who are, are kind of like normie left-wing people who always, they, they use that defense of always saying, it's about money, corporations are just about money, it's just about profit. No, you're, you're fundamentally misunderstanding their motivation. Because to believe that is to think that they make a series of bad decisions that cost them money, lose money, or don't get the highest return on investment. It's, you're, it's, you're clearly, objectively, shown evidence that it's not about money. It's about pushing a narrative, even if it costs them money. It, I mean, the left wing has blinders on as well. So, like, everyone has these blinders on. It's like, just start over. Like, start fresh and look at the things you see before you. And things like, oh, do I think something because I know it? Or do I think something because they've told me, they've led me down this garden path to believe that this is their motivation? It's like, it, it's a thing of, like, when you parrot things, and you got to stop and go, wait, am I parroting something? Or do I actually know something? And then, like, half the time you go, oh, I'm just repeating, I'm just repeating something I've heard. It's never, it never actually stopped in the cognition part of the brain. It just went from stimulus to response to hearing something and repeating a trope without ever thinking like oh the black guy dies in the movies first and you think about that i've always heard i had a friend of mine always said that and i stopped and th thought about all the movies i thought i thought that no he doesn't that's a that's an incorrect statement and you think about like how many of those other like incorrect statements do we just parrot in our daily life with ever without ever stopping to think about it it's like oh that's what brainwashing does anyway so um their narrative is this film about blt orgies uh and it's the same thing as a straight romance you're supposed to put these different things into the same category they're manipulating how you think to get you to accept this as romantic activity between humans and not just straight couples. That a BLT orgy is, if it's the term, romantic. But it's a fundamentally different thing, and they want to change the way you think. To go down the rabbit hole, assume everything they do is evil on different levels and different scales. It's like a puzzle to locate all the pieces of the cultural Marxist brainwashing. The scene in The Matrix where the guy's looking at the screen, he sees the binary, the code, and he sees beyond the code. Any, any, anyway, um, this, is a, this is a BLT movie. Um, by that I mean it's got all BLT actors. But I mean, I think in the 90s when they were making BLT movies, I assume the actors were also a BLT. With actors, it's kind of hard to tell. They're kind of... Kind of um, you know. Anyway, um, but what exactly does does it mean? Words have uh, words used to have definitions. They're arbitrary now. Miriam Webster defines a man as not a woman, and a woman as not a man. Seriously, that's a, a new definition they just threw in there. It's like, wait, that's a circular definition. You're saying you don't even want to live in a causal universe anything uh, anymore if you can you have definitions like that. Yeah, yeah, welcome to Weimar. What do you want me to say? The ADL changes definitions at will. And then when they get pressured on social media, they change them back. 
Those, they're not, are they changed? No, they're not actually changing definitions. They're not definitions. That is cultural Marxist propaganda. If it doesn't evolve organically, it's globalist propaganda designed to manipulate you. The white pill, or sorry, the white pill, is that we can do this also. And I say this as a trans 